Hello and welcome. I'm the Rambling Director and welcome back to our first time viewing of Downton Abbey. Today we're talking about episode two. So this time I actually took the initiative and took notes on this episode so that I don't forget anything. So this episode is about Matthew Crawley and his mother coming. We saw them at the, at the very end of the last episode and they are coming in and, and Matthew is the inheritor of the estate. Now, I think what's happening is rather than fight the law and the legal system that has put them in this situation, Grantham is hoping that he can get the um, to get cousin Matthew to marry one of his daughters and basically make them no longer total strangers and give him an investment in their family so that they can continue forward basically uninterrupted. Uh, along the way, Matthew is also bringing his mother who... Uh, seems to really like the wealthy life, and Matthew, however, does not. Matthew uh, does not want to be a lord. He doesn't want to sit around doing nothing. I do find that kind of a weird transition. I, I feel like the last episode, when we were introduced to Matthew, maybe this is the first flaw that I've really found, is that he opens the letter from Grantham, and he his mother goes, what does Lord Grantham want? And he goes, he wants to change our lives. Da, da, da. And it's like, you, you kind of think that he is excited about this prospect. And actually, no, when he gets there, he's very much not. He wants to remain independent. He doesn't want to be waited on. He loves his career. And so he gets there and immediately tries to take on a position. His mother, however, loves having servants and asking them for tea and stuff like that. But his mother also likes to have a, a purpose. And so she goes out, she was a nurse in uh, the military. And so she goes out and she's trying to help the local doctor. And it's really cool to see their dynamics, uh, that they're working class people coming into this atmosphere and don't really know how to adjust to it. And it kind of shows the two sides of it. Either you adjust really well but you don't want to lose your sense of purpose in life, so you go take on some sort of position, or you come in and you just don't like the whole thing at all. There was a particular moment that I think exemplifies the directors, the producers, their, their vast, vastly important point that they t seem to understand, that every single thing in this sort of Edwardian society it had to be exactly so. It was uh, sort of a holdover from the Victorian era. There's a moment where one of the servants, he leans over and the camera pans in, uh, or not pans in, dollies in on the back of his shirt and we see that one single seam is out of place and uh, that, that one seam has come open. Just one. And we're shown that. And then we don't, we don't get the payoff to that for another 10 minutes or so when Mr. Carson comes in and it's like, are you aware that there was a seam in your jacket that's come out? Do you think that, uh, that, we're suppo that we're supposed to just deal with you walking around looking like that? And it's, it's amazing. It's just amazing that, that the, the way they pull you into the way that other people see this world, the people in the show, the way that they would have uh, interacted with the world is so different than the way we do and the the use of of really very very fine filmmaking to draw you into that to make you see that this extreme close-up it makes you feel psychologically because film is a language and a close-up is sort of like underlining something and so they do that to show that every single little detail of this this way of life must be perfect and that the smallest thing out of place is a big deal. And it's a big deal to us because they film it that way. I love the way they withhold information to build suspense. I actually didn't even expect this, but it, by the end, was keeping me on the edge of my seat. But I, I enjoyed greatly seeing Matthew doing everything for himself, and his servant, Mosley, is just standing there not knowing what to do, and he's even complaining to Carson at one. He's like, I felt like an idiot. I was just standing there watching a man get dressed. <laughs> um, but... And he didn't, he didn't want me to do anything for him. And then at one point, Matthew is like, so, you know, you, you've grown up here and you're, you're serving everybody on hand and knee. And Mosley's like, well, yes, that's my job, sir. And he's like, well, that seems like a pretty silly job for a grown man. 
And it's like he catches himself and he realizes how severely he has insulted Mosley. Um, and he apologizes for him. And this, I, th I think, was probably the most interesting social element of the episode for me. The message, as stated outright by Lord Grantham, when Matthew was like, I think I'm not going to keep the valet around. I, I really just don't need a butler. And Lord Grantham looks terribly disturbed by this. And, you know, any other show nowadays, they would be like, Oh, those one percenters wanting everyone to wait on them hand and foot. Oh, uh, unorthodox. Um, but this show took the most even-handed approach I've ever seen with it. Grantham was like, is that is it really fair to deprive a man of his livelihood? And Matthew's like, what? <laughs> and Grantham's like, yeah, and, and when you move into the house and you take the title from me, are you going to fire the butler and the maids? Are you going to are you going to put them all out of the job just just to suit your own sense of self-worth? And Matthew's like, well, well I mean, I, I didn't. Well, I mean, when you put it like that and Grantham goes, and this is the thing that I said, it's not, it's not politically correct, but it's it's a truth of life. He says, we all have our part to play, Matthew, and you need to learn to play yours. The truth of the matter is, you know, this is, I think, one of the things that Mike Rowe's show, Dirty Jobs, did really well was to say, you know what? There's a lot of jobs out there that, that, that need doing and a lot of people who need employment um, that nobody else is doing, you know, if they want to do it. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. You just are not likely to see that sort of message in anything else nowadays. I'm going to rattle off my last few points really quickly. Um... I really liked the metaphor in in that situation that I was just talking about, that it was a little bit like um, the working class and the elites, and literally they are trying to marry the two. That's a pretty good metaphor. I thought that was cool that they did that. So Carson is taking bread throughout this episode and, and food, and he, he seems to be stealing it. And you're like, what? A Carson? This? I mean, you know, again, just one episode is enough to tell you this is wildly out of character. And then it turns out he's being blackmailed because he was a part of, like, a vaudeville routine called the Cheerful Charlies. <laughs> and the other half of this act is blackmailing him because he's on the run for some sort of petty charge. Lord Grantham takes up for him. Carson is like, just admits to him, tells him the truth right in front of Bates and the and the head the the head housemaid. He just tells him the truth. He's very admirable about it. He's like, and sir, I'll tell you the honest truth. I stole from you. I stole from the kitchens to feed him. I've disgraced myself, and I will give you my resignation right now. And Lord Grantham is like, Carson, don't be just so dramatic. What are you <laughs> and I was like, oh, I love him. I just want to take Lord Grantham and set him up on a little shelf. He's so awesome. I, I just love him so much. Uh, he's my, I, I was really hoping that they would not, because they could have easily messed up his character and made him a character that was not likable. But he's my favorite character so far, uh, next to Daisy, the little maid. I think she's so funny. The politics of this house are so interesting, and you, you would just think that it wouldn't be, on the surface, anything that you could drag this much material out of. But, I mean, just in two episodes, they've started about 30 different subplots that I am fascinated to see what gets done with the rest of them. Uh, there was a subplot with uh, Matthew's mom who goes and becomes a nurse and she is encouraging the head of this hospital to do this incredibly dangerous brand new technique to save this man's life and they do it against Maggie Smith's wishes. Maggie Smith comes in and is like, oh, I am the president of the medical board and I do not approve of this happening and um the doctor is basically like, well, you know what, I I guess we're just gonna, you know what, whatever it costs me, I'm gonna do it to save this man's life. It's great that the doctor, you would just think this doctor would be one of those stereotypical characters who's just like, um, no, I'm not, we're not gonna do this, we have standards. But no, after one conversation with Matthew's mom, the most he says is, please don't, don't make me get uncivil, please. And she's like, are you, is, is this going to be your excuse when the man dies? Is that, well, we don't know if the treatment would have worked. And immediately he's like, well, you know what, ma'am, I guess we're going to sink or swim together. Characters that just make moral choices, I just, it's rare because nowadays you feel the need to have every character be so deeply flawed that they're almost irredeemable. And it's supposed to make them better characters and it really doesn't, okay? We need some heroes. 
I, I don't know when it became this this thing where every character has to resist doing good for so long that you're almost wondering if you even want them to be the protagonist anymore. And at the end of the episode, Matthew's mom ends up having to share the title with uh, Lady Grantham, Maggie Smith, who is very embittered about this prospect of sharing her title. And at the end, of course, Matthew finally lets Mosley help him put on his cufflinks and, and he realizes that this gives Mosley purpose in life. It's something that Mosley loves doing and uh, to, to keep him employed there, to keep him in a livelihood, he has to go along with something that he maybe would rather not. Carson having doubts at the end of the episode and um, asking, you know, am I just an old fool who's pretending to, to have all this dignity? And... It's just great to see the depth of these characters. I really can't say enough how how much I'm hooked into this show in episode two. I don't know if it's ever happened to me before, but I am fascinated to see where the show is going. So that's all I have for today. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>